Now we want to make some observations about segment lengths and circles. For example, look at this first circle I've got here. You'll notice I've got a couple of chords. I've got the blue chord right here. Uh, the blue chord starts here and ends here, and then I've got the green one. Now notice they intersect. Let's see if we can make an observation about this particular intersection. I want to look at the blue, first of all. Now notice, below the intersection, I've got a segment of one. It's got a length of one, just you know, eyeballing it with the grid paper. Above, if you, if you look here, you'll notice that it's seven units. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm just counting. And that product, one times seven, is seven. Now let's look at the green. Okay, here goes the green. Same thing. To the right is one, and to the left is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we get seven. Now notice the both products are the same. They're both seven. Now that's the way it's always going to happen when you have chords intersecting. With this particular example, it was easy to see. We could just eyeball it. But let's look at this next uh, circle over here where we've got two chords intersecting at E. And what I'm saying is that when you take this segment, AE, and multiply by this segment, BE, it's going to be the same as multiplying CE by DE. That's what I'm saying. And what we want to do is figure out, well, is that true? So we want to kind of look at how we would argue to see if it's true all the time. So look, I'm going to make a, a connection here between A and D, do a little segment, and C and B, just so I have two triangles. Okay, so I have two triangles. Now, let's just dig something here. Think about angle A. Okay, it's an inscribed angle, and it intercepts this arc D, uh, BD. So we have this angle A, and it intercepts that arc, and we know that that's the way we can determine what the measure of angle A is. Now, notice also that A is not the only angle that intercepts BD, also C. So they intercept the same arc, so they must be congruent. Okay, A is congruent to C. Okay, so that's good to know. Now, let's, let's look at another one. Let's look at angle B. And angle B intercepts CA but also angle D does. So B must be congruent to angle D. So what we have here is we have two similar triangles. These triangles are similar to each other. Okay? Now, so I want to, let, let, me, let me write that out so, and see what that implies. So I've got angle A, E, D, is similar to, let me make sure I have this right, uh, B, let's see here, B, E, C. Actually, I don't, do I? I don't have that written out right. Things aren't lined up the way they need to be, okay? This should be C, E, A. I mean, C, E, D. E, B, I'm sorry. <laughs> C-E-B. You know, you got to get this right. Okay, so A-E-D is similar to uh, C-E-B. Yeah, I think that'll work now. <laughs> you got to get this right because, you know, you've got to have things lined up the way they need to be because now you can do this. You can say, okay, since these are similar, I know that A-E is to C E. what DE is to BE, okay? Just corresponding parts, okay? Now, a little bit of algebra gives you this. If you cross multiply, AE times BE equals DE times CE. Now, Let's think of AE times BE, okay? 
AE times BE. Oh, that's that right there. Equals DE times CE. Ah, cool. So apparently that's going to be true always. So, so if you look down here, if you look at this, this problem here, what we've got here is we've got 6 times 3 equals 9 times x. See? He's using that, that idea there. So you've got 18 equals 9x, and that means that x equals 2. Yeah, that's it. Now, we want to also look at a couple of more, uh, a couple of more things here, a couple of more theorems, uh, where that is going to help us to do find similar links. Well, not similar. Help us with similar problems. <laughs> okay, so let's suppose that we've got uh, a situation like this, where we've got these uh, secants coming through here. And there's external parts to them, right? External little secant segments. Okay. Now, here is what this theorem over here tells us. Here's how we would deal with this. We're going to take 9, okay, dig this, 9 times the whole length here. 9 plus 11, that's going to be uh, 20. And that equals 10 times 10 plus x. Yeah. And that's how we can find x. So, so let's see how this goes. We've got 9 times 20. Let me go ahead and divide out this 10. So I've got 9 times 2, little algebra there. Okay, see, so I just divided both sides by 10. 20 divided by 10. And then I've got 18 equals 10 plus x. And that means that x is equal to 8. Yeah, so x is equal to 8. Now, You'll notice down here we modified the, the problem a little bit, and now it's not, uh, you don't have two secants going through. You have a tangent. So notice I have a tangent at A. So how do we deal with that? Well, look here. Here's what it's going to be. It's going to be 5 times what? 5. So it's going to be 5 squared equals... See, same, same thing as before, EC times ED. So this is going to be X times 4X. Actually, not 4X. X plus 4. What am I doing? What's going on here? Yeah, like that. And then we can, um, we can find uh, X. So we've got 25 equals X squared plus 4X. And then, and then we could uh, we could solve from there. So we have x squared plus four x minus twenty five, and uh, well equals zero. So then we would use, actually we would need to use quadratic formula to solve that. So we would need to break out the old quadratic formula. Now remember, quadratic formula goes like this: if we have ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. Quadratic formula tells us that x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So what you would need to do is use that formula to solve for x, where you have a is 1, b is 4, and c is negative 25. Okay, but that's not the focus of this video. Now, let's look down here at these others. Let's see what we can do here. So this first one here, we've got, um, we've got, we want to figure out what x is. So we've got 10 times 18 equals 15x. And we would solve for x there. Okay. Okay, now let's look at this next one. We've got... 
let's see here. We've got 15 times, now look, look what we've got now. We've got um, 25 and 15, so the full length here. So that's 35, I believe that'd be 40. See, so this, the outside length times the full length equals the outside length times the full length, right? Outside length times the full length, and we would solve that, solve for x. Okay, so look at this other one here. We've got 6 times 16, see, 6 times 16 equals 8 times 8 plus x for this one. Okay, this next one, ooh, it's a tangent there, so it's 4 squared equals 2 times 2 plus x. Okay. The next one, you've got x squared equals 4 times 9. And then over here, you've got 2 squared equals x times 3 plus x. Yeah, that's the way they, that's the way they go.